Um, additionally, all of these recorded classes, um, if you want to try them again at home, will be posted on my YouTube video page. So you can like watch this again after you can try number two. Um, and I will always send you those links probably the day after. So like tomorrow, by the end of the week, I will send you the links to the, to the newest video if you want. Does anyone have any questions before we start? Ever and ever and ever. They just keep accumulating. So you'll be able to see ones um, from my past class. Oh. Yeah, there's a whole archive there. Here you go, Maurizio, right? That's, I'm pronouncing that right? Okay, perfect. You're welcome. Perfect, 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 perfect. Awesome. You you will want to tape all oh, the way good. around. No, no, you're good. Do you okay. need more tape? No, no. Okay. Yeah. You're good. Oh, there's Yes. And I do suggest that on this side, you get like half on, half off the table just to like keep oh, it yeah, steady. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can sticking to the uh, Yes. Okay. So um yes. Awesome. I love you are good. So we're actually gonna go half on, half off. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Oh, I love your nails. Thank you. Those are fun. Yeah, I can look my gadget. She goes for plain black. Oh, that's me. I rarely in color. <laughs> Absolutely. I love your outfit today, by the way. Um, on the sides too. Yes, yes, yes. So we're gonna go half off, half off, or half on, half off your paper. What? Oh, half on, half off. You got it. You're good. This ain't your first rodeo. Oh, this is half on and half off. Yeah, we just, just need it basically <laughs> to stick, right? To the we need it to stick to the paper, uh, the table. Um, you always risk a bit of running, unfortunately, but I really like this blue tape. It's a little more expensive, but, um, I find it's decent quality. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, it's just painter's tape. That's it. It is a little more expensive. It is, it's worth it for me. For sure. Also, I get to write it off, so that's helpful. You know. Okay. Um, I am going to take a little bit of water. I have a spray bottle that I use. You can go... Um, I like to wake up my paints, especially if they're brand new paints. They usually have, like, a coating um, that came from the manufacturers. So I like to kind of add some water and soak them just to like wake them up a bit so they're easier to use and manipulate throughout the class. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh my gosh. I have like no alizarin crimson. That's sad. Does anybody want to borrow, thank you, my water spritzer thing? Oh, nice, got frisket. Okay, we're going. You're painting your own thing, I'm assuming? I'm doing that, but my bird. Amazing, I love it. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do after my paints are like soaking a little bit is I'm going to take a pencil. Hi, good morning. You're okay. Watercolor. Yep, that's me. Take a seat wherever you'd like. What's your name, darling? Dahlia. It is a pleasure to meet you. I'm Julie. You do. Okay, the only thing that um, before we start pressing with our graphite into our pen, into our um, paper, 
is that watercolor is a transparent medium, meaning that layers underneath will show through and influence the layers above it. So if you have a graphite pencil and you press really, really hard, you will be able to see that mark at the end of the painting and it's gonna be very difficult to get off. You can erase, try erasing it. It's not gonna be great. So my suggestion is I'm going to press hard for right now so that you guys can see it properly. Um, but then if I ever press really hard, I go over with an eraser and I just, quickly erase all like 90% of my graphite mark until it's more of like a shadow than anything. Does that make sense to anybody, everybody? Okay, so. Um, again, because it's watercolor, you're going to see the outline of the paint unless you go in with like the color that you want to use. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. So um, I usually tend to just go with uh, graphite and then make sure that it's like more of a silhouette than anything of it. So like I can show you an example. So if I were to be doing like a leaf and like, yeah, if I were to do like a leaf, this is gonna show through, right? So then I would take my eraser and I would lift it off To about there. So I've taken off like 90% of my graphite. Make sense? I'm also going to do that same thing and I'll show you guys later on the difference. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint and go over top. Oh look, my brushes aren't clean. That's fun. So see how you can't really see that, but you can very clearly see that. So that is, um, that's what I mean by watercolor being a transparent medium. It's not opaque. So any layer underneath will show through. Make sense? Perfect. And if you have any questions, just blurt it out. I don't need hand raising. We're not, we're not in grade school. We're all adults here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw again heavier so you guys can see it, but I am making this line basically, all right? So I'm just gonna go in and about halfway up my page, I'm just going to create just a line. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Um, yep, 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 fault. Not yet, no. Well, this is gonna be a follow along. So follow along with me. Maurizio, do you need a pencil? Okay, no worries. This is a pencil, this is an eraser. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> I will just, uh, please, I, I do want those back. Those are my favorite. <laughs> no problem. I am a pencil uh pen thief myself accidentally always unintentionally so um i tend to keep track all right so once we have that um i'm going to just lightly get rid of again like 90 percent. i just wanted basically to mark my paper So today we are going to learn two techniques. We are going to learn wet on wet, and we are going to learn a dry brush, if you will. Um, wet on wet is going to be the majority of our um, what we learned today. Um, and wet on wet means that we wet the paper first, and then we take our wet medium and put it on. And then that's how you get the like, Everyone, does every, is everyone familiar with like the really beautiful blooms that you can get with watercolor? The, how like it looks like it spreads? Do I have an example? 
So like this is a dry brush. See how the paint is like, it looks like it was drawn on. Nothing was spread out. And then see how this is like really like soft and there's no hard edges. That is created with a wet on wet um, technique. You know what? The best way that you guys are going to start understanding it is to actually do it. So let's do it. Um, so I am going to grab about a medium brush. I'm using, I believe this is a number eight round. You could, actually, I'm going to move to a flat brush. I'm sorry. I'm moving to my three quarter inch flat. Just a flat brush. Um, yep. So I'd probably grab this one. This one. This one seems nice. Uh, you're good. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Yep. Perfect. The first class is probably going to be a lot more hand holding, just so that everyone has a great concept, and then slowly. You guys are going to be free to do your own thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to help you as you gain your confidence, right? Um, also, to just to remind everyone, or not remind, I haven't said this yet, to inform everyone, um, I usually like to have two cups of water, and then one I like to keep clean as much as I can. God knows I do not, but <laughs> the intention is there. And the other one I use for... Um, cleaning off my brush. So you will need some cups, which are always under here. So feel free, you are welcome. Yeah, perfect. You want the movement? I get it, I get it, I get it. An object that is in motion, stays in motion, right? How's your uh, strength coming along? Are you getting stronger? Sorry. Are you getting, like, is the physio helping? Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. You got your board all by yourself? Amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. Oh, I can't wait. I am going to Did I lend out my spritz bottle? Yeah. Uh, is this yours or mine? Okay, thank you. I'm going to do you a favor because these are brand new. They're going to have like a coating, a manufacturer coating on them. So I'm just going to soak them. And then that's going to make it easier to like grab your paintings, your paints. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not getting you, am I? There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Yes, but I will show you the ones that I suggest you put there. Okay, perfect. Um, let me see. Sap green. Yes. Okay. There it is. Sap green. Cadmium yellow. Crimson. You will need a crimson. And this. Um, blue fallow. Ultramarine. Definitely an ultramarine. Um, and a burnt umber. Oh, and a yellow ochre and a burnt sienna. Okay. And do I put them on? Yes. So you put them on the plate. Um, but if you want, you can put a, like a whole bunch okay. if you want. This is your choice. Or you can put a little bit. It's, but um, the nice thing about watercolors is that if they dry out, you can just add more water and awesome. it brings it back to life. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So just something that <laughs> something that I recently learned that kind of had me um worried for my own health. Cadmiums 
super poisonous. You should not be touching these with bare skin. So when you pull out your cadmium, try not to touch it. Just don't touch it with bare skin. So any of the cadmium reds, cadmium yellows, super, super poisonous. Something I just learned has me a little concerned because I've been touching cadmium um, for 15 years of my life without this knowledge. <laughs> yes, especially like high quality paints. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, you're okay because you have like a fairly, um, uh, but like there's a cadmium yellow here medium yellow you do not have it but like so cadmium yellow and cadmium red are really really bright colors so um like this is cadmium red right here it's an orangey red and then this is cadmium yellow it's a really bright yellow this one's just dirty um but uh yes so just so you guys are aware cadmium very heavy metal should not be touching it with bare hands um will soak into your skin can lead to heavy metal poisoning uh probably this one yes yes and cadmium red possibly this one yeah just be aware just something to be aware of something i didn't learn until like just this year starting school um okay so everyone has their flat wash everyone has water um again we're going to try and keep one water pot for cleaning our brushes and the other one clean as much as you can. I'm not perfect at it. I'm not very good at it. Um, okay. Yep. So this was dirty. One second. <laughs> I picked a dirty uh, cup, of course. And when... You are painting with watercolor. We're going to try and use cold or cool water because um, since there's a lot of fabric in our paint paper, those of you who have done laundry before know can relate to um, heat sets a stain, whereas cool lifts a stain out. So if you work really hot, you're not going to be able to have the full range of um, of of abilities that you would if you worked with cold because it's going to stain the paper does that make sense okay cool i know i'm dropping a lot of information on you right now i promise um throughout the rest of the semester uh you'll you'll drop it in tidbit chunks all right yes so cold lifts out whereas um heat will set a stain so you um, there is a technique called lifting where um, if you make a mistake or something, you can add on your paint and then like lift it off kind of thing. That is not possible if you dry it with um, a hairdryer or use hot water. But again, this is stuff we'll get into later on. Um, okay, so for the first step, let's let's finally get into painting. I'm sorry, guys. I... Um, have ADHD. So my teaching method is not linear. <laughs> and I apologize for that. All right, let's let's start doing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take my flat brush, and I am going to wet it in my water. And then I'm going to paint the entire above that line with the water first. Okay, so we're painting with the water first. And we want it so that it's shiny. and that it's fairly evenly wet. I would say um, one, of the, the, one of the biggest challenges that my new students have coming in is they're afraid of making things too wet. Don't be afraid of the water, all right? The more water you have, you can fix easier if you have too much water than if you don't have enough water. All right, does that make sense? So don't be afraid of the water. If you want, create puddles, and then you'll have like a really strong idea of what it looks, uh, like what it does.
How's my voice level? Can everyone hear me? Am I talking too loud? No? Okay, cool. Okay. Once your paper is nice and wet, how are we going to do this? Um, okay, I'm changing up the colors a bit because these are a little too muddy for my liking. Um, I'm going to start with blue. So I'm going to take a cerulean blue, which is like a baby blue color, if that makes sense. Sorry. Maurizio, I'm going to help you unwrap all of your paints. Okay. You like... Yeah, they don't make these easy, man. Okay. Um, I don't think I have a knife or anything, but I'll just help you open it up. No problem. Yes, you have a pan of watercolor paints. So this is called, referred to as a pan. Whereas the tubes are just tubes of watercolor paint. Okay, so, um, yep, um, let me see. You got orange, you got yellow green, and you got a permanent red. So if you ever, like a really nice practice is sometimes like marking down, like keeping a little scrap in here with like the names of them as well as like what they look like. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, I wouldn't tape them because you are going to be using this as mixing, but um, you see how you can like lift this up. You can just put it underneath there and then store it. Um, white. You know what? We're never going to use white here. <laughs> well, I promise you it'll be fun. No, that's the main thing that I'm going to enjoy. Absolutely. To enjoy it and to have fun. My goal is that you guys leave 3% more relaxed than you came. That's it. That's all I care about is that you guys get to play. How often do we have like where as adults, we have the liberty to play, you know? My mother-in-law always tells me no one's going to have your fun for you. So. <laughs> yep. Like exactly play all right thank you everyone for your patience as i do this um okay um is it drying okay okay yeah yeah we can wet it again that's fine um and then we're gonna take our cerulean blue so a light blue uh yeah wet it again so the nice thing about doing wet on wet is that the paint will only flow where it is wet. So think of the paint or think of the water as like the primer and the paint, like, so the paint will only sit where it's wet, right? So then I'm going to switch to a round brush. I'm probably picking up my number eight um, round, which is my preferred go-to. Um, it's my favorite paintbrush. And then I'm going to grab my cerulean blue, which is my paint palette is very dirty. So um, don't judge, please. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab my cerulean blue and then along the edges with a wet on wet technique, it is easier to just drop the color. So watch the difference between me actually like moving it, right? And then if I were to just drop it. See how it just kind of deposits the color and then allows it to flow a little easier? 
So again, I'm constantly wetting my brush just to make sure that my medium is very wet. And I am, whoops, just putting down my paint. And now everyone should have their um, the paint like moving and like flowing. And if it's not flowing, you're not using enough water. So what you can do if you have if you are stuck and your paint isn't moving is you can wet your brush and then just add more water there. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take my paint and go around, and we're doing the sky right now. Um, and then the next color I'm going to take is, I think I want to do more of like really bright yellows and greens. So I'm going to take my cadmium yellow, which again is that like sunshine yellow, your brightest yellow that you have in your palette. And I'm going to put it down over here. Um, and the reason why... I don't go right from my palette to my paper is because um, this allows me to control how much paint uh, my brush picks up. So then I'm just going to go. Lemon yellow will probably work really nicely. Yeah, I think so. Just, we just want like a really bright, rich yellow. And again, play with this. A little bit of both. So we're looking like for a Northern Lights almost effect. So some of it goes up, some of it goes down. Nice. You will probably need more water on your paint paper. It is looking pretty dry. Nice. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So you see how this is really streaky? Mm -hmm. Look what happens if all we do is add more water. See, so this is, yep, this is um, a really good example of being afraid of too much water, right? So if we just add water, now drop your paint there. Oh, no, just drop it. So um, I'll show you. Do you mind if I touch your painting? Sorry, I forgot to ask. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of paint and then I'm just gonna drop it. And do you see how if I dab it, it kind of just spreads on its own? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And, and again, you're going to have to add more water to the whole thing. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Beautiful. I love that color. Yes. Okay, again. Yes. I love first classes. All right. I just chose which uh, which one of yours is going to be dirty. Sorry about that. Do you mind if I touch your painting? No. Okay, perfect. So this is, again, a wonderful example of like two, not enough paint or water. Sorry. So see how if I just add water see how there it it completely gets rid of those hard lines so that's what we're looking for is soft 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 and this is a lifting technique that i'm doing right now see how i'm almost like lifting out the water does that make sense okay the first class is always the hardest because you have to take in a lot of information if your brain is feeling heavy i that means you're learning so we're going to wet this whole thing, really, really wet it out. See, when I'm talking wet on wet, I'm gonna show you exactly how wet I mean. I mean wet, right? See how wet your paper is now? But also see how everything flows really nicely. Does that make sense? So 
So when you go to add your color, which blue were you using, darling? This one? This one? I, I used? Which yes, one I used? yes. I used this one. Okay. So see what happens now if I just drop it in. So what I mean by drop is we're dabbing, right? And see how it like blooms and it's soft. That's what we're going for. Does that make sense? Okay. Do you think you can kind of experiment and try that yourself? You think you'll be able to get it? Okay, with practice, absolutely. Nice. Oh, I love how um, loose yours always turns out. It's a beautiful style. One that I actually struggled to obtain. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Um, this, again, this is a great example of not wet enough. All right. So look how wet that I use. But like, see when it's wet, how it flows? Yes. So don't. Yes, it moves on. So watercolor paper, watercolor painting, I find is um, considered to be a very difficult medium because people don't understand how to work with it. Um, yeah. Exactly. You have some control with watercolor, but also you are at the mercy of the water as well. So it's a really strong um, lesson and just like allowing your paints to kind of make their own mistakes and have their own free will. See how that just flowed up and how beautiful that was? Absolutely. Yep. So whenever we're talking wet on wet, this is how wet your paper should be. All right. Cool. 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 I like it. Oh, I really like this. That's cool. How did you get that? Nice. All right. I love the like experimentation you're doing. Do you have any questions or do you want any guidance right now? Yeah, so just, uh, um, just to get this better, I see that you've used some dark areas, the better dark and some bottom pieces. I would imagine, because I remember seeing all the lights, but it actually care the uniform, but it is actually a little better one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, the way that your painting is very dry, see how you can see your individual marks? I had not had to dry on purpose. It was very much to start. Okay. And now I'm going to dry off a bit so I can do a little bit. Okay. Uh, because I want to get lines, you know, more than really nice lights that I remember, like we had in the country. And they're, they're almost kind of little streets. Oh, cool. I've never seen it before. So um, I'm kind of just going off of stuff. But uh, the thing is, is that if you were to go wet over top of this, you'd be able to see some of these lines through it because watercolor is very transparent. So I'll make it a little wet. Long. Yeah. Long. It might look a little more like this. I wanted to say natural, but like you're telling me that the northern lights don't actually look like that. So no argues. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> okay, so now I want to add a little bit of green in here. Um, the only green I have is a sap green. It's fairly dark. I'm going to be mixing my green with my cadmium yellow to get more of like a lime green. And um, if you need to mix, um, a lot of times the lids of your paint palettes ha are like a really good strong area to mix your painting, your paints in. So I'm again dipping my number eight brush in water. I am picking up my sap green and I'm going to put it over here. And then I'm gonna allow these two to kind of mix until I get like a green that I actually want to use. Like I want more yellow, but my brush is dirty right now with the green. So if I were to dip it in here, then I would be like dirtying up my paint. So I'm going to clean my brush and then I'm just going to pick it up and then mix it. And uh, yeah, this is kind of like a nice green that I want to use. And then I'm going to go over top. And again, I'm dropping in 
So I'm using more of a dabbing motion. Does that make sense? I'm just, I'm just dabbing along. It's almost like, does anyone know what pointillism is? So it's like I'm doing pointillism with my brush when I'm dropping down the color. And see how it didn't spread here? That's because it's not wet. So if I wanted that to spread, I actually kind of like how that looks, but if I wanted that to spread, I would add more water to that area. Does that make sense? I'm adding paint right now. And then to the areas that didn't spread, I'm going to add in a little bit of just water and see how that softens out that like hard edge that I had. Again, here, I want it to spread a little bit at the bottom only. See how that just removed that hard edge right there? Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Um. So being, um, I am actually going back to school for art education. One of the classes I have to take is psychology education. Something I have learned from that is that if you guys get to this point where it's really uncomfortable and really hard and it doesn't feel like your brain is moving, you feel like you're like, just like sluggish, that is the process of learning. Learning is not comfortable, it is uncomfortable, but I promise you that that is your brain creating new um, neural pathways. So that's your brain. That's you exercising your brain. All right. And that process helps um, maintain your cognitive health. <laughs> no, it's good. It's perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to just allow it to blend together. There you go. Do you think you can do the rest right here? Try the rest right there with the water. Sorry, you're gonna need to add more water. I love the color of your nails, those are pretty. Yep, so just, we're just gonna like kind of blend these together. Yep. Don't be afraid, go over it a few times. Yep, go, you're perfect. Now go backwards, because we're gonna want to blend in. There you go. What do you think? You just did it, yeah. And now try dropping in some of this because of the fact that it's you just wet it. So now try dropping in some of your color. See how it's spreading? Oh, uh, dip that in water. Yeah, now add it on. Um, we're over here. So see, ooh, yes, look, see how beautiful that is? That's what we're looking for. Does that make sense? Yes, beautiful, Marilyn. Amazing, yeah, I like, I like this. I like that you're wetting it. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to show you just quickly what happens if you just wet it. If you just wet it and then go in with a wet brush, see how it just kind of like creates some flow and some highlights. So now you won't get like, so that's what creates like, instead of just one single color, mm -hmm. now you have two colors that are flowing together, but you can still tell that there are two different colors, right? So if you want to, you can continue that throughout the whole thing. That's up to you. Right. I'm going to leave you. that to you. You're very welcome. I love that. Gorgeous. Awesome. I like it. Do you like it? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So again, what you can do is you can just take this and then just with water, soften it up. See how we're just taking some water you just soften it up. There you go. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna let you do that. Oh, I love this. Any questions? Okay, cool. 
since you're doing your own thing, like I, I, I kind of need you to ask me questions because does that make sense? Okay, cool. Nice. What do you think of it? Uh, um, my problem is, is that when I paint like smooth lines like that, it sort of it makes the area I don't know, horizontal. I like to paint like this uh, up and down. Okay. I, I, you know, I don't like this part. You don't? What What don't you like about it? It looks like it's a, it's like a fish. Okay. Yes. So I believe so, uh, because it's too, like, there's a hard line. Yeah. Yes, the hard line is what you don't like. Okay, perfect. I can help you with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some clean water, and then I'm just, I'm going to wet up here, and then I'm just going to bump it up right there and see how with that small little circles, it has just taken away that hard right. edge. And here too. Right? So then you can go in. Can I see this? Do you mind? So I'm just going to go in and then grab some more of that paint and then add it here. And then it bleeds up into the what? What? Does that make sense? Yes. I'm looking here. It's, it bled into the blue. That's okay because um, there's always going to be a little bit of reflection, right? Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. So do you think you could do this all the way to the edge? Um, okay, so again, yeah, I'll show you one more time, okay? So I'm going to take clean water. I'm going to go over. Oh, okay. And I'm going to just yeah, wet yeah. this area, but yeah. also using small little circles, I am going to lift up even if that line. Even if it's dry, yes. We don't want it to be dry right now. We actually want it to be wet. So if your paper is dry, wet it continuously wet it make sure that it does not dry all right does that make sense yep. okay so yep and now that it's nice and wet you'll be able to drop color and it'll bleed like that does that make sense okay so my painting is still fairly wet um i'm going to need to dry these or re-wet these high spots So I've re-wet my high my uh, high spots. Cool. Um, and now let's add. I think I'm going to add in. Um, what I want to do is I believe I want to go darker at the top to make it look like um, nighttime is coming. If that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take again that blue that we used down here. And I'm going to mix it with a darker blue. So I took my cerulean blue. That is the name of the blue that I am personally using. And I am going to mix it with an ultramarine blue. And now we're getting some nice darkness coming in here. But it's not dark enough for my liking. So um, I'm actually going to add a little bit of burnt umber, which is a brown to it. We're going with color theory here, which is a whole other class. <laughs> but um, just trust me, um, over practice, I've, I've recognized what colors I need to mix in order to get the colors that I'm looking for. So this is a nice blue for me. I like this blue, especially for like the darkness of the sky. Again, I've mixed my cerulean blue with my ultramarine blue. And then once I got the nice vibrant blue I wanted, I added a bit of burnt umber, which is a dark brown. And that really like darkened it up for me. And then I'm going in especially to my corners. I love making my corners really, really dark. That is my personal the paper still has to be wet, correct? And then I'm going to go in and I am going to make sure the top for sure is going to be nice and wet. Or I mean, sorry, dark. Again, we are working with wet paper. Um, and then I don't really want to make this 
darker, this dark, what I want to do is create a gradient. So once I've added my color, I'm going to clean my brush. And then just with clean water, I'm actually going to drag down some of this paint to match to like kind of meet up here. I'm going to add like just a hint of actual of like a really bright green. Just because I feel like that looks nice. All right, now I'll walk around again. So this is basically it for the sky. I like this. It's subtle. It's effective. Does everybody else like it? Because if you want to add more colors, feel free to add more colors. Amazing. Yep. So you just need to do the next step, which is taking your flat brush and just kind of working it down. See how you can kind of just drag the color just with water, just with a wet brush. I can take some of this color and I can move it down. Does that make sense? Okay. Do you think you can do that? Perfect. I'll leave this to you. Amazing. I love it. Yeah, exactly. So then what you can do, ooh, that is a very dirty brush. So then what you can do is just with water, just take water and look what happens. You can like move it around and you can kind of blend them in a little bit and create kind of like a gradient. Mm -hmm. And then you can just keep it going. Yeah. If you want that softer look, that's what I would suggest doing. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, you have all the color. I wouldn't add more color. I would take more water and start like bleeding it down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Did you kind of see what I did over there? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Do you want a demonstration on yours? Okay, perfect. Do you mix here or do you mix on the paper? Oh. I do tend to mix here. If you're comfortable with that, that's usually what I tend to do. But if, if you want to go with yours, like I respect your process as well. Oh, okay, perfect. These paints just look so nicely used that like I just figured like, um, what is your experience with watercolor? I just Okay. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So, yep, now all we need to do is take your water, just the water, and kind of bleed that beautiful color. This is rich and gorgeous down until it kind of meets a little bit. So, would you like a demonstration? Yeah, basically, yes. Except we're going to try and get it to be light going down because we want the darkness here. So I would just concentrate on taking near the edge. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then bring it really far down. Don't be afraid of it. You definitely could. Yeah, that would make it, um, you'd have more drama in your painting. Amazing, great job, yes, you're getting it. Yeah, I, I like it. Do you like it? Okay, perfect. Okay, you can add. You can take this and mix it with a little bit of that if you want. That's fun. Just yeah. try different things. Just try different things. Absolutely.
low expectations for your first class, right? <laughs> always, always. And then when you're finished it, do not throw it away, keep it, because then at the end of the eight week section, session, you can compare yourself to where you started, right? So like, it's hard because I, I remember comparing myself to masters when I was learning and I was like, oh, it's not good. And it's like, yeah, of course, because I've been doing it for like a year. <laughs> so don't compare yourself to me, please. Please do not compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to Leia. Don't compare yourself to Marilyn. They've both uh, been in my classes before. <laughs> I do use salt sometimes. Yes. Um, I'll bring in some salt. Yeah, it creates like snow, like frost look. And we are in winter, so I would, uh, um, but like, um, I'll bring kosher salt and I'll bring table salt and we can experiment and we can figure out the difference between the two. Well, kosher starts salts really, really coarse, yeah. whereas table salt is like, yeah, so it, it works differently. Okay. I, it, it's, it's the size of the um, grains. Yes, thank you. It's the size of the grains. That's, that's it. It probably would, maybe a little bit. So delicately, though. Very, very, very little. Okay. Um, what do we think? Are we happy with our skies? Does anyone want me to come around and like help you out a bit before you move on? All right. I take that as a good. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do you? I can help you because I can see. Would you like me to give you some? Advice? Okay, perfect. Yep, absolutely. Um, we're just going to add, we're going to kind of like do a lifting technique where we just take some water. So I'm just re-wetting your brush, right? And I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to do like little tiny half circles. All these hard lines. And then I'm just going to damp that off, re-wet my brush, go over here. And then do the same thing. Does that kind of help what you were thinking yes. of? Okay. So this is a lifting technique. This is only possible because it's cold water. If we were doing wet water, it would the um, paint would 100% bind with the fabric. And um, you wouldn't be able to lift it out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yes. So um, I'm going to do one more. And then you can do this section. But I just want you to... Um, to pay attention to my process. So I'm wetting my brush and then I'm just getting rid of any excess. I'm going here and I'm just using little semicircles to kind of move it around. And then I'm just going to, because I can tell, it gets to a point where I can tell that my brush isn't able to pick up anymore. So I have to, um, I have to clean it and then I'm going to re-wet it again. And I'm just going to go back and do that again. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, perfect. I will leave that to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. So if everyone's happy, we can move on to the snow that's down here. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. copy okay um so then we're going to do a very similar process where we are going to wet this bottom part and then we're going to add um our blue to it the difference being that did everyone notice that the paint didn't flow outside of where it was wet Everyone noticed that the paint, the water kind of created like a barrier. Thank you. Yes. Um, so that being said, if your top is still wet and you wet the bottom and they touch, we're, they're going to flow into each other, right? 
So the way that we can avoid that is since my top is still wet, I'm going to take my smaller brush. So I'm actually switching to like a number four. Um, or a nice angle brush could work too, if depending on what you have, but um, I'm going to stick with the brushes that I recommended. Um, so I'm switching to my number four. I'm taking my clean water. If nobody has clean water, now's a good time to go and refreshen it. And then I'm going to go close and I am just going to leave a small valley of white. Does that make sense? So there's going to be a small valley of just dry paint or of dry paper in between the sky and the, um, the lower part that we are creating. And this is going to prevent the two from like flowing into each other. Oh, okay. Well, um, yes. <laughs> um, yes. So I have about, I don't know, like two centimeters of just dry in between. So I'm taking my small brush and this is just allowing me to get that like really precise edge detail. And I'm kind of angling so I can see where the shiny water is. And I'm just making sure that I have a little valley in between my sky and where I'm adding my wet so that they don't flow into each other. Does that make sense as to why I'm doing this this way? And then once you have that area, you can go in with your bigger brush and just fill in the rest of the space. So because, yeah, it just gives me more control with the smaller brush than the larger brush. Yes, yes. Because there's a dry valley in between my, do you want to come and see on my painting? So if you angle just so, you'll be able to see like a dry area oh, yeah. in see, between. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. So why did you use like, the, um, the small one? The small one, yeah. Because it gave me more precision, better brush control. Okay. That's it. If you have really good brush control, go with it. But because we're all beginners, I like to give, um, not handicaps, um, I like to give, I forget what it's called. I like to give easier tips and tricks. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And if you guys are ever curious, please come up and look at my own work. Especially when we're doing wet on wet because you can't see the like shine that you can see. Don't be shy. I'm sure as hell not. Okay, so now it's nice and wet. There's a really thin line in between. You can come see if you want. Absolutely. See how there's like, it's wet and then there's like a really thin area that's dry. Yeah, yeah. So that prevents the top from bleeding into the bottom because it's dry, right? So it like creates almost a moat, if you will. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So I just created a valley of dry where like there's no wet. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. If we weren't in a two hour class, 100% I would wait for the top to, um, to dry before going to the next step. Because we are on a time frame, I'm giving you guys tips and tricks of how you can move forward at the beginning, I was super impatient. 
I never waited. And then I was very upset that things ran into each other. So um, this is a way that you can do. This is a cheat, if you will. Um, okay, so now we're going to add in the reflection a little bit of the snow, but it's going to be the exact same color as here. So I'm going to add a little, I'm going to mix a bit of a blue right now. So I am going to take that same color that we had over here. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of my ultramarine blue to just give a little bit of a different blue. I'm just looking for a slightly different value. And now, and since we wanna work really light, the brush I just used to mix my color is super loaded with paint. I do not wanna go in because it's gonna be very, very dark. So instead I'm gonna clean my brush and then with a wet brush, I'm just gonna dip the tip of my brush into my paint to like control how much paint I pick up with my brush. And then I'm just gonna go in and kinda just add in some of this color. It's almost too dark for my liking, so I'm going to clean my brush, dip my brush into my clean water, and then just like spread around that color to give it more of like a light color. I I'm, I'm really want like a nice light color. See how light I'm keeping it? Very, very, very delicate, very light. Almost a hint of color. That's it, that's all I want. I just want like more of a hint of color. Beautiful. Um, do you like how dark it is? Or do you wish it were lighter? You wish it were lighter? Okay, cool. I can work with that. Good. So I'm just going, we're going to, instead of adding more color, we're going to lift color off. All right. So I'm just taking my brush. Whoop, I'm so sorry. I'm taking a brush. Um, this brush is kind of coarse. Like it won't kind of bend. See how easily this one bends in comparison to this one. So if, um, you have like a, this will work though. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to take this and... I'm gonna go in and I'm going to just, see how these circles lift it out? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm just going to go dry it off, pick up some more color, and then I can lift it out. You can even go in and kind of like yeah. dab it out. Look at these, like this is dark. Yeah, but I love that. Okay. It's dramatic, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna get you more uh, paper towel. Oh, okay. Are you sure? All right. Nice. Okay, I like this. My only thing is that this is a really hard line. So what I'm going to do instead is just add a little bit of water and see how that just like softened that up. What do you think? Do you like that better? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can add that here and then you can do it to these if you want to as well. I'm going to leave that up to you. Nice. Do you like it? I do. Okay, cool. Do you want to, do you find there's not enough contrast in between the two? Uh, do you want this to be lighter or do you like lighter. how dark it is? Uh, you want so it to be lighter. Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. 
So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a clean brush and we're gonna do that lifting technique again, where I go in and I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch and then I'm just, actually, do you mind if I take, do this? Cause this is what I use this for. Yep. So then you're gonna go in and you're just gonna like pick it up. See how that works? Mm -hmm. And now that's like a lot lighter. Yep. So I would probably do it over here as well. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, absolutely beautiful. I love the loose quality you have of this. It's like, um, yeah, you have like a very nice like Monet-esque style to it. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Um, my, do you like how streaky it is or do you want it to be softer? Softer. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take water on my brush, right? And I'm just going to go ham on just like pushing it around with the water. See how I can just push it around with the water? And then um, you can like clean this, pick up more white water, and then just like continue it. See how it looks like a lot softer now? What do you think? Could you try that over here? Okay, cool. Yes. I absolutely love it. I think it it like adds such a beautiful quality. I love it. Yes, I would keep it. Absolutely. It adds um like a lot of depth to your painting. Like it makes it look like um it gives it that 3D aspect of uh you know, it's it's hard to cap to make something 2D look 3D. But that helps. It adds depth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Ooh, nice. I, I love the color. Okay. That's fun. I prefer this. I put it this day. Why this little bit? A blue? But yeah. Then I realized it was too much. I said, what am I going to do now? I like it. So I, I, I went for this color. Just I used to pretend Bob Ross. Yep. So I'm It's great. No, I love the decision you made. I am going to take out your white um, because since you don't have like a really light blue, you can always mix it with white and it'll make it lighter. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So if any of your colors are ever too, like, especially if you want to get like a nice pink, you can always mix things with white. Make sense? I think I have to put like a lighter here. I don't have to buy like a lighter here. Well, you could, or do you mind if I mix over here? No. Okay. No, uh, I, I saw that you were doing it. So if I take this color, right? That's what he does. You know? I think I start to say. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to take some white. That's what I did. That's okay. I didn't open your white. See how much lighter that makes it? So that's an option too. But then look. Absolutely. I love it. That's yours. That looks too much like mine. <laughs> oh, wow. Paul, I love the movement you have in this. You've really like added in a lot. It looks like they're, these are dogs. No, they're supposed to be horses. Not like they look like, they look like animals. They're four legged creatures. Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, you can always like make them a little longer, a little taller. Um, this is beautiful though. Do you have anything you'd like a little help with? Yeah. So I'm a little worried that it's a bit too busy. That there's too much texture in there. Okay. So if you were looking at it, what areas would you see without it? Like that's, that's texture. Yes. So right now I'm blurring my eyes just to like kind of, um, I don't know what this line is right there. Yeah. 
back to the horse's brain that can work to your toilets. Okay, okay. It's being small, but there is dirt on that. Okay. So what has happened is I put wax in that, so it's resisting a bit too much. So I'm having trouble, with, you know, getting color in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit too much. Here we're better. Maybe you get a sense of the fluid. Here. Maybe if you were to bring it like over a little bit more, like make it almost disappear into here, because it looks like this is a mountain. Right. Well, so it is. it's a mountain. It's like a yeah. Mountain. So if you were to like make it disappear behind it and make that like stop and then bring it out here and then make this whole thing that same color. Does that make sense? What, what do you mean by make it all the same color? Um, like, like add in this hard line, like maybe soften this hard line. Sorry, I didn't even ask. Do you mind if I touch your painting? I'm so sorry. I apologize. That's I will right. not do that again. Okay. Thank yes, you. Thank I'm you. Thank you. you asked, though, because I had a teacher who touched it all the time. So, yeah. I'm, I'm also... That's okay. That, so hey, you know, now I know. So, yeah. you need to soften it. Yes, but the I would also. I left it harder was if you have light, you have a light from the moon lighting the landscape. Okay. It's snow. Underneath the snow here, the shade should be this side. Light should be hitting here, and there should be almost no shadow on this. Okay, yes, but right now it just kind of looks like it <laughs> disappears onto the side of here. Right, so you Whereas, if you were to bring it out more here and like curve it, it looks like it's going around. And especially if you made it like smaller and then like larger, kind of thing. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to understand. What I'm trying to. Yeah, it could disappear more into here. Yeah. That's why I did wider. It is wider here, going here, here, but you not be reading that. You could also bring it just over here, and it looks like it's going to disappear underneath this. So here, let me give you a little bit of a demonstration. All right. I'll just tell her it is. Because I don't need to use it. You know, then it zigzags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. So you have a piece coming here, and then you have one coming here, and then another one there. Okay. So if your road is coming like here, you could have it go like that. And then if you make it like, does that make sense? Or you can even coming over here and then disappear over the hill. And then all this would be the road. Does that make sense? So you don't want to turn it around this way. Well, because my only concern with this is like you'd have to keep it really thick because it doesn't look like there's enough space, like there's not enough um area, like because it, it gets small too fast. Does that make sense? So just do a little like yeah, what you could do. What you could do is, since this is here, no, I'm not. So what you could do is bring it up here a little bit. And now, because it's, see, because it's like a lot wider, it looks like there's a lot more behind it. So I have this point here, if you want to go there, the mountain part goes here. Yes, I do see that. So what do you want me to push it out here? Yeah, I would probably bring it up like here. Does that make sense? It's too late. But you can I, always I, I extend it this, over, extend here. This over here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You can also bring it out here and that would give it more I distance. Can make this more than out here and bring this over like that. Okay. Does that work a yeah, bit? my only concern is this is like a really sharp edge. You're gonna want like a curve. Yeah, you're so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can also, like, instead of this, you can also just come here and make it like a smaller one. There was a bunny who could where this is coming from, but the bunny did not soft. And he had to look a lot So he had a scene where he had two cows walking out. He did a different thing than he did. But he had that. Similar, but he had a very sharp angle. Okay. A lot of very 
Okay, if that's the style you're going for, go for it. So, yes. Always. Okay, somehow I have this circle. Yes. How do I get rid of it? You don't like it? Uh, do you like it? I do. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Like, how would you get rid of it? Let's say so that's because, just, like, um, what, happened there? what happened was you brought over your brush and a water, water dripped and oh, it pushed nice. out, it pushed okay. all of it. So instead of getting rid of that, I would probably add more drops to add okay, more texture. Drops it, will... it slowly, it'll like push over your, yeah, it does look like the moon. Nice. Everyone's looks so good. Good job, you guys. That looks a lot nicer. Do you like it? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we are good on time, is we are going to, does everyone have a black? Black. No, no color. Okay. Okay, so what you can do is we, we want these trees to be very, very dark, so you can, you can um, mix together like an ultramarine blue with a black until you get um, a depth that you want, like a navy blue kind of thing. If you don't have black, I'm going to take my ultramarine blue right here. It's just a dark blue. Yeah, the darkest blue you have. And mix it with, do you have a burnt umber? Okay, mix it with burnt umber. The darkest brown. And just keep on mixing until you get like a really, really, really dark blue. Like almost a Payne's gray. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go with the smallest one I have, which for me is, I believe, a number two. My number one, sorry. My number one brush, the smallest one that I have. So now that we have this really beautiful dark color, I'm going to show you guys how I create my trees. So I'm going to wet it with clean water. I'm wiping off any excess. Um, this is a dry this is a dry brush technique. So um, we want the paper and our brush to be fairly uh, dry. I'm going to pick up quite a bit of that color, and then <laughs> my camera's in the way. Um, I'm going to go up with a really thin line, and then I'm going to start adding dots that like kind of form um, a triangle. Yeah, you could start in there. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay, so then I'm just going to continue on. Um, because I am right-handed, I'm going to work from the left to the right. If I were to work from the right to the left, I run the risk of like putting my hand on it and then smudging it, right? So instead, I am going to go um, left to right. So the next one, I'm just going to put right next to it. And then again, I'm just going to add my dots in somewhat of a triangular shape. And then just bump them up next to each other. And I'm gonna keep doing that along the entire edge. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Oh. And I'm going 
to put this here so that we have a decent reference. Feel free to add more space, push them closer. We, we don't want this to be uniform. So like I've added some spaces. Some of my clusters of trees are a lot closer than others. I've got different heights going in there. Does that make sense? All right. And this is a very, like this is no rush. Be calm with it, smallest brush possible. Um, if you don't have like a super thin pointed brush, I can also lend you a brush if you are would like one. And the the way that I get this so delicate is I'm just letting the tip of my brush touch. I'm not putting any other weight besides just the tip. Does that make sense? The more weight you add, the more the bristles are going to um, expand, and then you're gonna be left with uh, like a thicker or a thicker line, yeah. Yes. Okay. Of course, I didn't. The white and the thing didn't work out, so I have to try something else, or else it wasn't even. Mix black with blue, yeah. But we're gonna mix it up here before we put it onto our painting. Nice. Okay, that looks like nicer. Good job. You're welcome. Awesome. How are you doing? You okay? Okay. Um, it's, uh, you are enjoying it? Good. That makes me very happy. It's your choice. I'm doing very, very small. This is one of my favorite parts about watercolor is just like, kind of like just the methodical turning off your brain and just, just, just doing it. When the class gets really silent, I know that everyone's deep in their concentration and they're enjoying themselves. Where did I, what happened to my music? Sorry. No, they're just, um, okay. yeah, they're right. little. Did you see how I did it? Yeah. Okay, cool. If you want a demonstration, let me know. I can stop by.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, over 15 years, I've developed a lot of brush control. Wow. <laughs> it is literally effortless for me to put on my eyeliner. <laughs> Since I cut my hair shorter, I've been wearing a lot more like eyeshadow and stuff and playing with my eyes. And it uh, turns out that um, painting is a skill that transfers into like makeup really easily. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, beautiful. I love them. Do you like them? Oh, sorry. Did I scare you? <laughs> I really like them, though. Why? Yeah. They look like trees. No, yours absolutely look like trees. Yes. And I really like, um, like this one looks like it's right at the top of the hill, but then these ones look like they're like farther away, which is really interesting. And then this one is even on your hill. So I really like the fact that um, you are playing with depth. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really like that. And now you're making me wish I did that. <laughs> Gorgeous, yes, exactly. Nice, it's a good effort, absolutely. <laughs> Again, really good effort. <laughs> Do, yeah, do you want do you want like a demonstration? Yeah, would you like a demonstration? Okay, cool. So can I have this? What color has you been, have you been using? This one. Okay. Perfect. So see how they're going up like this? So you could you should go like this. Yes. So it's okay because you can go in front of these guys. So if I go in front and then I just kind of like keep on going down 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 like almost like like a skirt almost kind of thing <laughs> see the difference okay so do you think you can continue that yeah yes okay so just make it really really big nice okay yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can help you out. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab this brush. So I'm going to make this one bigger. So you see how these are going up like this? So they want to go down, right? So we want everything to go down. And I think the trick is to blur the individual lines so okay. yeah i cover think cover up the individual yeah. lines and then always make them so what you could do if it's easier is you can almost like kind of create like the shape first okay. and then like fill it in okay. does that make sense we still want to add some like see-through but like 
definitely not as um as much as you have they look a little bald bald right now that makes sense yes okay did that help okay perfect yes that's yours thank you beautiful that's okay do you do you want a demonstration as to how i do them okay um okay oh yeah i'll use yours okay so that's okay so I'm just going to dip it into a little bit of water, pick more up, and see how you, oh no, you're good, you're good. Um, so see how they look like individual branches? So what I'm gonna do is using just dots, I'm going to fill those in. And what do you think? Does it look yes. a little more natural? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Do you think you can do that? You can try and replicate it? Take it off? No. Okay. Okay, you're done? Okay. If you're finished, you can pull off your tape. Um, pull away from it, though. Don't pull into your tape. Pull away from your tape or your paper. If... Okay. Did you enjoy it though? Okay, perfect. It'll get easier each class that you do, you take. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially if you are not an artist, it's um, cause like doing art is simultaneous nonlinear thinking but also like thinking of multiple things at the same time and like um and like being aware of like this is how i need to hold my arm this is how i need to like this is the pressure i need to put on it but i also need to make this movement but also like i need to know how it's going to look inside my painting so like art is a very um it's a complex way of thinking Absolutely. Yes, yes. And the one thing that I find art very helpful with is problem solving skills because that creativity, the more you use that creativity, the more you're going to be able to start thinking of like, how do I approach this problem? Oh, let's pick from over here instead of just like, this is immediately in front of me. How am I going to do this? So um, I find that like my problem solving skills are very, very strong because of I haven't killed that creativity that like so often happens when you go down like a science path or a math path or something like that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And also, like, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's known as flow. If you can get into a state of flow, then you're good. I mean, who here hasn't been absorbed in a project and then realized that like four hours have passed and you forgot to eat and drink and everything else? Like that's the state that art, I find, gets you there really, really nicely. Yeah. Nope. It's nonlinear. And that's the state that leads to happiness. And enjoyment. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting. This scientist who coined the term flow, he's got a very complicated name. I can't pronounce it. Um, he studied pleasure versus enjoyment. And like pleasure is instant gratification. So like, 
um, eating foods that like bring pleasure and like, um, like, uh, like a lot of substances that you could do, um, like sex and everything pleasure but often when it's done it leaves you wanting more because it's instant gratification whereas enjoyment you actually have to work at enjoyment but like this is the kind of stuff when you get into that flow that's what leads to enjoyment which was really interesting yes yes non-creative people or people who don't do like art or have hobbies i'm like what are you gonna do when you retire like it sounds so boring <laughs> you're just gonna watch tv all day <laughs> yeah that works too yeah you better have a good group of friends if uh, you're about to retire and you don't have hobbies <laughs> So when you guys are ready to, we can, um, in order to get these shadows right here, you go down to the tree and you do the exact opposite, but then before it dries, you go in with a paper towel and you pick that up and it leaves a shadow of what was there. Make sense? Okay. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, I like to. Yeah. But the ones that are behind, that look like they're behind your hill, don't add shadow to those. No. Just the ones that look like they're on the top of your hill or in front of your hill. All right, that's enough for me. So now I'm going to work with a wetter brush and I'm going to start doing my shadows. So again, I am picking up less of my paint, going over and then before it dries, I'm going in and picking it up and it leaves more of like a shadow. Yes. Uh. Yep, you can add your shadow into the white line for sure. You can also fill it in with like more of the blue and drag it up if you don't want it. When you are doing the shadows, I suggest your brush is wetter and um, has less paint on it because it'll make it easier to pick up. nice that was great i love it though it looks great this looks good that looks good i would probably add one here here and here and then you're good nice yes 
So because this is really dark, let's go in and let's lift that out. So I'm just re-wetting it, right? And then I'm gonna go in and see how it lifts out. So like, if it's not lifting out, just re-wet it again, and then you'll be able to lift it out. Beautiful. Okay, yes. So we're going to take a really wet brush and just a little bit of paint. See how I'm barely touching the paint? And so then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go on. Uh, it should be darker, but like, because we're lifting it out, it's not that big of a deal. And then, so um, let me grab a little bit of that darker color and do it there. So just the tip and a really wet brush. And I don't even think I need to lift this one. I think I can just leave that alone. What do you think? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna lift this. So see how you can lift it out? You're not stuck with the color. Right. Yeah. Yep, just with water, I can go around and lift it out. I will say, though, I am really rough with my brushes because I'm constantly doing that. So it always blunts out the tip of my brushes. I probably go through brushes like every six months I need new ones. Tools. Exactly. How do you feel? I, these ones are a lot nicer. Yeah. yeah, I would just go in. And again, see how they're separate? So if you just go in and fill in some of those. See how it just kind of like fills it out a little bit more? Do you like that better? Do you think you can try that here? Okay. Do you want a demonstration? Yes, okay. Um, so I'm going to take just a little bit of that color, right? And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna, oh, I need more water on my brush. Okay, so I'm gonna go down and then kind of just replicate oops, the same way that I was at the beginning. And then you can just take this, just dab it a little bit and see how it looks like a shadow. Does that make sense? Okay. This is truly beautiful. I love the depth you have in this. I would probably go a little bit darker here and here. Just go a little darker there. And it'll make it like pop, really make it look into a shadow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice. Ooh, yeah, see how that just like, that just like really made it more dramatic and separated it? Yeah, I would probably make the sky a little darker. Oh, is it a mountain? Okay, then I would go like, I'd go like this dark then. Yeah, you're probably right where it's supposed to fade into shadow more. That's something that I always um, can't wrap my head around. Yeah. I know, I, whereas I always want to go darker. <laughs> okay. This is beautiful. I really like this. How are you feeling about it? Happy. Yeah. Bit too much texture. Would have liked a little bit more pop in there. This is sort of wrong. But I think that would make it easier. I like the textures, especially like this area is very strong. I really like that. You get a sense that that's something up there. Yeah. I really like the softness you have up here. I find this is a very successful right here. And then I think this 
is really successful here. This is very successful. And then this is also very successful. Yes. Definitely. Is this a person? Yes. Okay. I was going to say the perspective, the, um, this is too big. Yeah, I was gonna say they look more like um like maybe donkeys. Um okay. they're not they're too big that person's too big for horses. Or maybe they're small horses, you know? <laughs> they're ponies. Maybe I can make the horses. They look like ponies, but uh yeah. I'll try and make the problem was that we start to make these bigger and this guy can Yes. Happens, you Absolutely. It went through a growing phase. Proportions are not easy. You want to draw a bird flying? That's super easy. Um, yeah, so you can take your dark shape. Depending on how big you want it, I, mine is probably going to be fairly small, um, but I'm just going to draw a V. A tiny little V. So go up and then down. That's it. It's just the black, the same color that we used for the trees. Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm just doing a group and then I'm lifting up that whole group. That's it. It's just, it just, uh, it saves me time because <laughs> we only have about five minutes left. There you go. Do you like it though? Okay. So if you wanted to, you could go home, try it again. I, can, I cannot lift it any more. Like you can absolutely. You definitely can. Yeah, and I would probably lift with with these. Okay. So when you guys are ready, sorry. Um. So when you guys are ready to take off your paint, please pull away. So pull away from your painting, because if your painting is wet at all, you run the risk of tearing into your painting and then removing all the hard work that you just added. So we're pulling away from our painting when we're lifting off our paint or tape. How do we feel about our first paintings? Good. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Do we have a theme that we'd like to try next week? Yep. Yep. I let you guys choose the subject matter. If you guys want to try subject matter, if you want have anything specific you have in mind, a beach, we could do beach. Abstract. Okay. We'll do a beach. We'll do abstract throughout the class. Oh, you're very welcome. You too. Did you have a good class? Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's, that's awesome. I love it. Um, abstract. You too. I've been teaching since the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a friend who um, ran like, hi, 
Bonjour. I had a friend who ran a company that did like virtual um, retreats for like companies and stuff. Um, and she was asking for uh, like someone who could teach painting. And I told her I could. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I've fallen in love with teaching. And um, yeah, now I'm in art education, um, which um, once I get my um, Bachelor of Arts, I will be returning for a master's in art therapy. So that's my goal. Yes. Yeah, I love Concordia. Oh, uh, to do the bird again? Yep. Um, so I just took my painting my and just very, very, on a small level, I'm going to do it like right here. Just did a V, basically, just a small little V. Yep. A very thin brush, yes. You're very welcome. You know, I like the colors of this one. Um, 